Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and the new edition of our online interview series. We want to get an update from Gamma Exploration, and we have now the interim CEO with us, Dr. Jacob Vabaz. Hey, good morning to Canada. How are you, Jacob? Yeah, good morning. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you very much for taking the time. First time you are with us here at Commodity TV as you are the uh, new interim CEO, which uh, yeah happens from time to time. Uh, we know that. But uh, of course, you guys had also some good news. Uh, you are an exploration company. You are searching for, I call it, the future metals uh, for energy, battery metals, etc. And uh, yeah, let's start with the 11th October um, because uh, the TAI project in Quebec is uh, the project yeah, of choice um, and uh, you found titanium vanadium occurrences also so what's going on there that's right yeah so what we did uh, and I'll, I'll dial back a little bit I mean in the start of the uh, uh, start of the spring this year we flew a large airborne geophysical survey uh, which is very it's, it's an EM survey yeah, they're very good at picking up uh, conductive rocks which can be massive sulfides, but they can also be other things. And so we generated targets, had an exploration crew on the ground for a month to test all these targets. And uh, uh, we found not only sulfide occurrences, but also sulf occurrences that contain nickel and copper, but also these really interesting titanium vanadium occurrences. Okay. Now, uh, for those that may maybe aren't so um, aware of you know, what titanium is used for uh, and vanadium. Uh, vanadium is one of the components in vanadium flow batteries. Um, it's, it's another battery technology. Uh, it's considered a, a critical element and a strategic element. Um, and titanium is mainly used in uh, steel uh, applications and also for uh, any white paint. Yep. So any white paint you put on your walls contains titanium oxide and the largest solid titanium mine in the world is actually uh, about 80 kilometers south of the Tai project and is run by Rio Tinto. Oh. So it's a very interesting area to actually find titanium in uh, and we're pretty excited by, by what we found there. Uh, okay. Quite a few occurrences close together that they may, you know, may be quite a decent uh, volume. So we're definitely mm -hmm. will be planning some follow up there in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be just the next question. Titanium, I mean, occurrences is one thing. Um, what, what, what will you do as a follow-up? Because, of course, we all know you need a certain volume that it makes uh, economically sense. Of course, yeah. And so what we have now, we have very good geophysical uh, data that kind of gives us an idea of, of, of how large the geophysical anomaly is. We have surface samples that confirm there are metals of interest there. And so the next the next step is to drill these targets. And so we'll likely start with an RC drilling program sometime in the spring when the days become a little bit longer and we can work a little more efficiently. Um, and, um, and and that will, that will truly tell us how much uh, there is. Okay, super. So there will be quite a busy year, busy year for next year. That is great. So vanadium, titanium, nickel, that is all fantastic. But I saw also you have discovered new nickel and copper surface mineralization there. So that looks like the Tai project is like a, like a massive uh, all metal joker. Or what is it? It's it's a critical <laughs> metals breadbasket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. What we found at the we call this a St. Catherine's target. Uh -huh. um, it is a it is essentially a cluster of geophysical anomalies and on f seven anomalies in total. And on five of those, we found nickel and copper at surface. And so. Just to give you an idea of what exactly this exploration crew does there, this, we're looking under overburden, but it's not very thick overburden. It's about half a meter to a meter, sometimes maybe a few meters. So the crew has been dragging a small geophysical device behind them, which um, it's almost like a metal detector. Uh, and uh, when that machine says, hey, there is something conductive and magnetic here, that's when they start digging and try to find uh, what the cause of it is. So, um, so in in these places uh, where they have dug up their samples, they found they found many occurrences of nickel and copper close together. It's, it's very clearly associated with the airborne geophysical data. Um, 
And so that's, that's another target for follow-up with the drill. So we have six, um, six separate geophysical anomalies there. The largest one is a kilometer, uh, kilometer wide. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's pretty serious. Um, there's pretty serious length to the geophysical anomaly, at least. Of course, we don't know for sure if that also means there's enough nickel and copper there, but there's, there's most certainly something quite exciting there uh, for us to put a drill on. Okay, super. So, and that, uh, for, for um, let's say, what you have found so far and what have you seen, do you have the feeling this is more like something which is c- very close to surface? So, meaning that you do not have to uh, to drill extremely deep, uh, meaning mm-hmm. maybe in the future it could be open pitable? I know it's way too early, but just from, from your experience? Yeah. What, uh, well, what we see... All our drill targets right now have nickel and copper at surface. So we don't know the grade yet. We're going to get our samples back in a few weeks, hopefully. Uh, and um, I mean, obviously, if it's high enough, then well, we, we know the sulfides are at surface. And um, and if the grades are there, then yes, potentially uh, these, these occurrences start at surface. From the geophysics, we know that some of them have a depth extent of at least a few hundred meters. Uh-huh. Um, so it's it's certainly looking quite uh, compelling. Okay, super. It sounds all uh, quite promising. Of course, it's early days, but uh, looks mm-hmm. like some something nice is there. Um, maybe two words on your two other projects because you have the Muscox lithium project also and the Big Onion, which is copper, moly, and gold. Anything going on there, or do you focus more on Tahi? Uh, currently, we're focusing on the Tai. We really think that there's, you know, we own this 100%. We think there's something really exciting there. There's, we, we found so many different occurrences that we can go after in, in, in essentially a new nickel region in Canada still. Um, that that we're, we're really excited about the Tai and that will, will remain the focus for the immediate future. Mm-hmm. Um, Muskox, we, uh, we did some work in, earlier in the year. We flew. Uh, we flew a LIDAR and ortho survey uh, a little bit later in the year. Mm-hmm. Of course, there was a little bit, um, we, we couldn't work it as fast as we uh, had expected due to the local conditions as well. There were some very severe wildfires in the region there. Um, but in the meantime, since we've acquired the lithium, the Muscox lithium project, the market has cooled off significantly. And so we, we feel that right now it's, it, you know, the right decision for the company is to work the Tai project. Um, and that same goes for uh, Big Onion. We've also done some work there, uh, mainly on the on, on all the historical data that uh, was there. Um, and it's 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 a really interesting project. With uh, it's very close to Smithers. It has a small copper resource at surface. Um, but again, we think that the biggest win for investors. Uh, yeah, we can generate from the Tai project. Yeah, which makes absolutely sense because then we hope for rising share prices also. Um, what is the financial situation today? Do you have the money to drill next year? Yes, we do. We're fully funded until uh, at least the end of 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're planning uh, a 20 hole uh, RC program for some time in the spring. Hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully the end of March, April probably the time we'll be able to get back in and, um, and, and we're financed for that. Yeah, and then yeah. move it. Great. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I like it. Super. Jacob, yeah. thank you very much for the update and uh, yeah, wish you a, a busy season then still. And uh, I would say let thank the you. drills turn and show us some very good results uh, because the world needs more uh, commodities, definitely. Absolutely. We're working on it. Super. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jacob. Yeah, la- ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Jacob Verbas, the uh, interim CEO of Gamma Exploration. And you heard it very busy with the Tai He project. Sounds like a, a real multi metal box here, this project, because first we were nickel, now it's uh, vanadium, titanium, copper. This is really fantastic. And those are the metals of choice we really need uh, immediately for the next years. And it's always good to explore because exploration is the future of tomorrow for production and that's exactly what Gamma is doing and don't forget they are in the beautiful Quebec in Canada so first class jurisdiction and they are financed until the end of next year and will do a nice drill program so check it out thanks for watching us and bye bye from Switzerland <laughs>